tell us what inspire and what inspiration brought fresh into um, the uh, into our mainstream. Yeah, um, well, the inspiration behind this, and thank you for having me. Thank you, Paul and Jan, uh, for allowing me this opportunity to speak. Uh, what inspired this CD was a storm. It was a season of hard times in my life, and mm. some storms we go, God, God orchestrates for us, and he sends us to, uh, and some we kind of create on our own. Mm. And this is the one that I created on my own. Mm. And uh, through that, I wasn't looking for a new CD, but songs just started coming Matter of fact, the first song for the new CD, Fresh, was good. And um, this, this Fresh is, the whole theme behind Fresh is Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, that says, Remember not the former things, mm. neither consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Mm. So I'm like, woo! Yeah. So <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there, you know, uh, just, in, just in a pool of shame and, and, and guilt because I messed up so bad. I blew it so bad. Mm. I didn't think I was worthy of, of, of anything, uh, which I'm still not, but it's because of his blood that I am. Hello. But in the midst of that, God says, I'm doing a new thing in your life. Mm. And I'm so glad the scripture reads like that because a lot of times we disqualify our future or we hinder our future because of our reverence for our past. Uh, we, you need we, to say that again. You, you know what I mean? We, we, we kind of doubt our future because we hold our past in such high esteem. We, it's kind of hard for us to believe that God is even able to turn what we're in around, which is why Jesus said to, to, the, to Mary and them when they was at the tombstone of Lazarus, show me where you laid him. Take me to the point where you ended it because they closed the tomb. That represents, you know, he said, roll the stone away. The stone represents closure. Yeah. That means it's over. It'll never happen. Show me where you gave up. Show me where you lost hope. And it's in that place that I'm going to restore. In that place, I'm going to bring it all back. And I'm going to start fresh in your life. Yes, sir. Man, I love that. Yes. Show me where you laid it. Show me where, show me where you let it go. Yes. Where you reached the end of your rope. Yes. Where you did all that you, you could, could do. do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, take me there. Mm -hmm. And I, he does that in our lives yes, on a sir. daily basis, doesn't he? Yes, sir. I mean, if you have a problem, one thing you want to do is take Jesus to the place where your resources ran out. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Put him in that spot yes. and watch what he can do. And he wants to prove to us that he's so God. Because it's not like, remember when uh, 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 oh, God is the only God that can speak to nothing and something responds. <laughs> you know, in Genesis, in Genesis, he speaks to chaos and order responds. Mm -hmm. But the order came out of the chaos. It's not as if he brought order to chaos. Mm -hmm. Like how when Moses spoke to the rock. God didn't put uh, water on the rock, but out of the rock mm -hmm. came water. Yes. See, God is into doing things that we think is impossible. There are situations we call is dead. It stinks by now. Lazarus was there four days. Mm -hmm. Jesus, if you would have been here a month ago, if you would have been here last year, mm -hmm. I could kind of see it working out. But God says, I am the resurrection. And what you count out, I can still work a miracle in. Mm -hmm. So God is into working miracles. And we are living a miracle right now. My wife, my ministry, my family, we are living examples that that all things work together for good. Mm, praise the yes, Lord. Sir. Yes, well, sir. you know what? I am not about expose here. I'm not interested in yes. your sins. Amen. I'm interested <laughs> in the forgiveness yes, of sir. your sins. Yes, sir. Yes, oh, sir. By the way, our home audience needs to know that, too. You don't have to confess your sins to me or right. your preacher. Amen. You confess your sins to Jesus because yes. he's the only one <laughs> who can forgive your yes, sins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He yes, can sir. resurrect your life. Yes. Well, yes. I'm glad to know that there's a resurrection and that things are Fresh yes. in your existence. How many tunes did you pen for this? I don't know project? how many songs is on there. I think it's about 16 or, or, or something like that. But there's something on there for everybody. It's a lot of different styles. A very uh, transparent CD. But it's the journey. It's that journey from uh, despair, you know, shame, guilt, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. I, I grew up very, you know, strict Pentecostal mm -hmm. uh, apostolic upbringing, which I appreciate the fundamentals and the foundation. A lot of it was traditional, but a lot of it was foundational, which doesn't change. That's right. So I'm, I'm grateful for that upbringing. But a, a lot of times, because of that upbringing, when you fall short or you miss the mark, the guilt and the condemnation is severe. Well, just, I mean, you don't have to t uh, tell us, all right, all right, but, all right. but I want you to minister to <laughs> okay, us. Okay, okay, yeah. I want you to minister to us in the sense that 
Um, here's someone who grew up in an apostolic, uh, faithful yeah. uh, environment, yeah. uh, a home of that nature. Yeah. Um, but what elements of the world can push even the faithful mm. uh, into the wrong track? Are there elements around us that we can fight against? I don't know if it's a specific element. Everybody has different things, different mm -hmm. buttons. But I think we have to be careful with uh, familiarity. Mm -hmm. Being familiar with how, how just doing church yeah. in instead of like flowing by the Spirit. And then thinking that you know you. Thinking that I could just take this this far. I could just do this this much. Trusting ourselves was a, was a big issue that I had. I could trust myself. I could do this and take it this far. I could think, you, can't, you can't do that. But I don't know. We all are, are tempted. But I thank God that he said that with every temptation, mm -hmm. there's a way of escape the so Lord. that you may be able to bear it. So I'm, I'm grateful to be on, on, that, on that side of it, mm -hmm. man. God is doing so many things within the body of Christ. I found out it wasn't just me, but God is starting out fresh in, in so many different areas. And a lot of times it happens through storms. There are sudden deaths. A lot of people are just, just dropping dead out of nowhere. And it's like, whoa, sometimes that's God's way of starting new and, and starting things afresh. Sometimes it's storms. I remember in Acts 27 yes. when Paul... Um, when, when Paul and was shipwrecked, yeah. the storm was so severe, they started throwing out cargo. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Storms sometimes help you get rid of extra cargo. Yeah. It helps you get rid of extra relationships. It helps you get rid of extra habits that you probably wouldn't have noticed. It helps you prioritize. Okay, I thought I couldn't live without this, mm -hmm. but this storm helped me realize this got to go. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. storms help you do that. Storms help you realize. Storms help you realize what got to go. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Storms help I you like realize. That. You what, know, what if has it's to go. gonna sink your ship, you better get rid of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I'd rather live without it than die with it. So, Hello, you know, yeah, you're yeah. preaching now. Yeah. But he's starting fresh, man. He's doing a new thing in the body of Christ. He's breathing on like like the Valley of Dry Bones and Ezekiel. He's breathing on his body right now. We're coming back to life, and I'm excited to be a part of that move. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, talk to us about the changes that you've had to go through and, and how it's affected you personally yeah. and your ministry. Because you minister as well as sing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love to minister the Word of God more, more than singing. Uh, because man shall not live by bread alone or by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It changed everything for me. It changed mm -hmm. everything. Again, it helped me prioritize. It matured me very quickly. And uh, we receive everything from God by, by and through grace. Like, we... The anointing, I was, I was anointed by grace. You know, I'm like David. He didn't have to work for the anointing or go through storms mm -hmm. for the anointing. A lot mm -hmm. of people believe you got to go through for this oil. You got to go through. God gives it by grace. You can't earn the anointing. Mm -hmm. So David had the anointing. Samson, before he was even born, he was an anointed. However, God allows the anointed to go through storms to develop character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right? Now, they were anointed, but they didn't have character. I was mm -hmm. anointed and gifted, but I did not have character. So, so I, I believe that all these things, one of the major changes in my life was developing character, developing integrity, developing spiritual maturity was one of the major things. Long story short, I had to grow up. Yeah. And I had yeah. to man up, and that helped me grow up. Praise the Lord. I can only imagine, and I don't believe I've asked you this before, but I'm curious because uh, uh, you are avant-garde, or you're the leading edge of contemporary urban gospel music. Wow. And, and I can just imagine with that kind of creativity, because I can remember when I was on the leading edge of music back in <laughs> 1970. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, as a, as what, what was that? I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> it's okay. As a songwriter. Uh, but I didn't have the challenges that you had because I wasn't trying to write for the Lord back then. I was okay. just trying to write for the world. I was yeah. trying to write dance music, yeah. you know, um, and love songs. Well, love songs are cool now. I yeah, yeah, I I'm not you. against that. I got you. But, but here, you are, have been criticized, I'm mm -hmm. certain, yeah. because of your rhythms and your style. You're, yeah. you're flamboyant <laughs> in the way you perform. And when I first saw you, I said, yes, but some <laughs> others might have said, no. <laughs> and, and I'm curious as to if that happened and how you dealt with it. Yes, that happened. <laughs> uh, I remember literally getting put out of a church. We were singing. I, I opened our set with the worship medley as the deer. And we were just going on it. And the pastor was crying. We were, in, we were somewhere. The pastor was crying. We shifted near the end. Now, let's celebrate. And, you know, I had the whole crew, and we were running all over that stage. He was up there like, get off, get off my stage. 
church. He literally kicked us out of his church. And I was like, man, I'm the same one that had you crying a minute ago, brother. You know? <laughs> Tell the truth. Yeah, so a lot of times I wish that people would try the spirit and see if it be of God before they just look at it and say, nah, that ain't him. Because mm -hmm. we never know. God is so vast. God is so wide. Oh, he really and is. And his expressions are unfathomable. We don't and know. You don't, you don't know, but that same person who asked you to leave mm -hmm. may have had their mind opened up by the spirit of God. Sometimes it's in the midnight hour after a pastor has done something like that and true. he's seen where he has done something as simple as quenching wow. the spirit yeah, 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 yeah. and God will tell you when you just quench the spirit yeah, you know yeah, yeah. in the middle of the night you feel like water is pouring all yeah, over and you're yeah. like oh. you say, yeah well you quench the spirit that's right. what you did it's funny yesterday yesterday my wife and I were in a, a part of Florida and this elder gentleman came up to me he said hey uh, Mr. Trippin I speak to you for a minute I said yeah sure how you doing thinking he may want a picture or my daughter loves you I I don't know what he was going to say. Mm -hmm. He said, I wanted to say something. I don't know if you know it or not. You may have got wind of it or you may not have. But I said something or did something that was offensive to you. And I didn't realize what I was doing then. Basically, he said, but I wanted to take this time and say I apologize. And I want to know will you forgive me. And I was like, why? It was so heavy because I wasn't expecting it. I was like, oh. I said, yes, of course. I, I, I forgive you and I release you. And uh, that's one of the, another major change that had to happen in my life because... That, that bitterness, will, 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 when people start leaving you, when you're in a storm, when people mm -hmm. start turning their back and family members and friends start be, being out on you, mm -hmm. I, got, I got bitter really quickly. So I thought I had to really pray, and Lord, I got to be prayed up, you know, just in case people ask certain questions. But I really had to be prayed up to be able to forgive. I needed mm -hmm. that anointing to be like, you know, I do forgive you. I release the bitterness. And uh, that was a major thing that someone from the older generation said to me. And I kind of received that. Like, there are a lot of people who may not have a chance to come speak to me and say, listen, I didn't understand it then, but I get it now. Mm -hmm. But I just took that as like, that's all. That's everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, and I, so I forget. I understand. I understand. Well, you know, I mean, people do say things that come out of the narrowness of minds. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad that the Lord took this old man, yeah, me, yeah, yeah. and opened up my head so yeah. that I could appreciate the genre, the style, the, yes. the fusion, the yes. power, the yes. anointing, yes. the fullness, yes. the excitement, the, the joy of your music. Yes. It is wonderful. Thank you so and much. though I wish I had written it, um, <laughs> uh, I can accept it and I, I see it as a wonderful, uh, wonderful ministry. I'm grateful to God that he's still blessing me. And I, I said it recently, I said, it's not that when God wants to bless you, it's not in, in, in spite of our faults and we know we, we blew it or whatever. It's not that he overlooked our sins. Because it, it says that in uh, Isaiah chapter 43, if you keep reading, he, he, he says, you didn't bring me any offerings. You didn't da 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 but I'm still going to do a new thing. So it's not that he overlooked, it's not that he ignored our sins. He, 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 he evaluated it, he calculated it, and he still chose to bless us because his son already died for it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, uh, we're, you know, he's not, he's, it's, it's really the fact of it is he already took it out on something else. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get angry and you punch the wall, me and you cool now because I took it out on the wall. So Jesus was the wall that God took his anger out on, mm -hmm. and he nailed it all to the cross, and now we can be blessed because he took it out on someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my, yeah, my, my, my. Yeah, yeah. And that's something. He took it out on Jesus, so I'm grateful for Jesus. I always say, thank God for Jesus. Yes. My grandma used to say it way back in the day, so now I get it now. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. Because of him, I'm blessed. Because of him, I'm healed. Because of him, I'm delivered. Because of him, I'm set free. Because of him, I'm restored. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. That doesn't sound like a song. <laughs> right. Right, right. We got to work on that song together. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for Jesus. Jesus. Yes, sir. So he's yes, sir. given us a lot of things, but the best thing he ever gave me was Jesus. Yes, sir. Actually, my daddy gave me Jesus, and wow. I preached about it just a couple Sundays ago. Okay. And uh, I said, you know, my daddy gave me... Uh, uh, a few good memories and, and a lot of whippings. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like my house. <laughs> but the thing he gave me that I value the most was he gave me Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, it's amazing how uh, that happened. What do you say to to people who are trying to get started, who, who want to make a fresh start? Yeah. How, how do you speak to them? How do you advise them? What do they do when they need to make? a fresh start. Well, I heard Bishop Jake say one of the hardest things that we will ever have to do is change 
first of all, realize that you have to change. And then right after you realize, man, I need to change, comes the realization that I can't do it in my own strength. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing. Let go. Stop trying to change and let God change you. Mm -hmm. That's number one. I had to let go. I, I tried to change my moral behavior. I tried to change. I, I, I. I just had to let go and say, Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Anybody who is sick and tired of being stale and in the, the same place, you're sick and tired of the, the same routine, it don't have to be sin. You could just be just stuck in a, a and real stagnant in a certain place. Recognize that the Lord is the only one who can change where you are. He can bring you from where you are to where you need to be because he knows the thoughts that he thinks toward you. He knows the plans that he has for your life. You don't have to be stuck. You don't have to be stagnant. You don't have to be entangled in sin. God is the only power that can release you from that. So realize, listen, Lord, I need a change. Release it, give it to the Lord, and allow him to change you. It's all going to be him. That's why he brought you to the end of your rope. So you'll reach for a higher power. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's wonderful ministry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know, one of the sad realities is sometimes people uh, uh, keep doing the same thing yeah. and expect different results. <laughs> right. What's that called? Uh, insanity? Something like I that. I think they call that <laughs> craziness. Something, something not, not well about it. <laughs> right, right. Um, but here's the thing. A lot of people don't come to the place where they realize it's change that they need. Yeah. They just feel as though wow. they can't do it and it's over. Right. It's time for depression. Let right. me sit here and mm -mm. sulk and have my pity party mm -mm. And, uh, and, and, and don't try to do anything. But change is yeah. what they need yes, and change is what Christ can provide. Yes, sir. And it's never in our own power again. Anything, that, anything God ever instructed anybody to do, we always look at what we're capable of doing. Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Mm -hmm. He looked it within himself. I can't. I stutter. I, he said, well, just go. I, will. I didn't say go without me. Mm -hmm. go. I will put my word in your mouth. Jeremiah, you're a prophet. I'm young. Don't say I will be with you. So it's never in our own strength, never in our own power. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So go forward in the power and the strength of the Lord and watch him prove to you and he'll give you a fresh start that'll blow your mind eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that god has prepared for you praise the lord yeah. praise the lord yeah, yeah yeah well what's what's next in your life what else <laughs> is god working out and doing um, with you what's next um, i'm about to sing another song oh, no, okay. I'm just <laughs> uh, no uh, <laughs> my wife and i started the uh, a ministry it's called the word on the street it's a bible study ministry that we have in our hometown and uh we, we started two weeks ago mm -hmm. and my heart is there my, my whole schedule is scheduled around Wednesdays mm. because we're going to be home uh, bringing the, the word to the streets. And I'm excited about that work that he's starting there. Also other projects, other music and all that stuff. But right now I'm interested in building my family, building my marriage, and uh, building that people he's called me to in the uh, New Jersey area. I'm wonderful, excited. wonderful yes. time. And you're going to sing, oh my <laughs> Lord. <laughs> He's going to sing No Other Choice. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you for being our guest. Thank you for having me. Uh, we're going to have...